How do you like being alone at home? Isn't it kind of exciting when after months of being in a house full of people, you suddenly get a day of peace? I felt the same when my family decided to visit my grandma Eleanor as her health was falling rapidly. But they left me looking at how my exams were starting in three days. Not like I was going to study or anything in their absence. I had an entire plan of chilling and relaxing in this empty home. Right after they left, I first drew a bubble bath for myself and played the music of my choice, which I never got to when others were here since its lyrics were a bit lewd. My family always had these weirdly strange expectations from girls that they shouldn't be interested in such things, or think about it on that matter, but I have always been a bit different from others. Trust me, sometimes I even surprise myself when I'm sneakily watching those kinds of videos in my room and I got turned on by that. So I guess you get an idea of what I was going to do in that bubble bath. And those of you who didn't get it, I'll leave it to your imagination. I wasn't some underage girl to not understand right or wrong. Instead, I was a college student who had been single for almost all of her life and had some needs of my own. As I was giving myself a nice session and was almost on the edge, I suddenly felt as if someone was watching me. I turned around to see no one was there, and I knew no one could be home at the, because literally everyone was on the flight. It was strange. I don't believe anyone knew the passcode for the house. Thinking it to be my imagination, I went back to finish what I had started, and once I was done, I relaxed for a few moments, when again I felt someone watchful eyes on me. I got out of the bathtub, wrapped a bathroom around me, and started looking to see if anyone was there. But again, it was nothing. My bedroom window was open though, and as I went to close it, I found a note sticking on its door. I opened it, only to find it was written by my red lipstick. And the words were, although it wasn't my intention when I broke in, regardless, I enjoyed the show. A sudden chill ran down my spine. Someone was here, and they saw me. My first reaction was to close the window and lock it from the inside, and then went around the house to check if anyone was there before locking all the other doors and windows. Luckily, nothing else happened that day. But the next morning, I woke up from my doorbell, which was continuously ringing for the past five minutes. Whoever it was had no patience, to the point where it was annoying me. So I quickly put on my shorts and t-shirt and headed downstairs to see which maniac was ringing the doorbell. I opened the door, but there was no one. Instead, there was a package lying on the floor, so I picked it up and went back inside. There was an address written over there, neither senders nor mine so I figured whoever it was must have left it on the door and run off. There was a weirdly slutty outfit in there when I opened the package with a note. For tonight, do it in this, baby. My hands started trembling and I dropped them on the floor. I had gotten a stalker who was creeping the hell out of me. This seemed pretty dangerous with me being alone at home, and considering how my family wasn't going to come back for another week, I had to somehow deal with it on my own. But unexpectedly, nothing out of the ordinary happened for the night, despite me being fretful, till I fell asleep. I was awakened by the feeling of being touched by someone. When I woke up, I saw a boy wearing a mask. The reason I said it was a boy was because I could tell by looking at his physique that he was around 15 or 16 in his teenage years. But despite being a 22-year-old woman, I was still terrified by the look in his eyes and the fact that he had broken into not just my house, but my room as well. Something about him was sparkling through his eyes as if he was saying he would kill me if I scream or make a noise, and not only that, he was holding a knife. He didn't do anything though, and left through the window, and when I came back to my senses, panic started to rise in me. Who was that kid? Why would a kid break into my house? I'm sure it wasn't just so he could feel me up with the fact he broke into my room the other day as well as when I was taking a bath, but it was clear that whatever it was he wanted collided with his teenage hormones after he watched me that day. Not only that, but with the fact that he was coming and going around the house with such ease, he must live around here somewhere. But how did he unlock the windows? I remember quite clearly that I locked it before falling asleep. Anyway. 
I didn't strain my mind thinking about it anymore, and decided to have a walk around the neighborhood since I had a pretty good idea about the few houses which had teenage boys. The next day, as I was walking around, I noticed Miss Britt's son getting a scolding from stealing from her. Miss Britt's son was 17 years old at the time, but despite that, he looked two years younger than his age. By the looks of it, she had grounded him and was cutting on his pocket money, which led him to steal. Seemed pretty interesting to me, though, since she is known for being a perfectionist and quite strict. She was also one of those nagging Karens who's always sticking their nose in other people's business and always keeps track of how many years it's been since I last dated. Well, that gave me an idea of who might be the one breaking in. But before I could be sure, I needed to check something. I went back to my house and went through the places I put money. And bingo, that shithead was stealing from me. So that was the main reason he kept breaking into my house. And now that he already had started the game, I was going to write its end. The same evening when I was enjoying the nice cool breeze on my front lawn, I saw him walking on the other side of the road. As our eyes met, I waved at him with a big grin on my face, and I could tell by his reaction that he had gotten nervous. But I wasn't going to let him get away with this, so I called him over. He hesitantly crossed the road and walked to my house. How's it going, Chase? I asked, giving him the politest smile I could. Everything's going fine. Well, his smile was awkward though, and I knew why. It's fun. He looked at me with a confused expression, trying to figure out what I was referring to. School, I said again, with a chuckle this time. Uh, yes it is. He nervously chuckled in response. So, what about are you doing these days? Is it fun messing with me? I whispered in his ears after walking closer to him, which made him take a step back. W what do you mean? He looked around to check if anyone was watching, which was kind of funny to look at. Oh, you know exactly what I mean. And if you want to hide our little stalking and stealing a secret from your parents, you would be helping me with my needs. But of course, they are unique, and I'm not sure you'll be enjoying some of them or not. I gave an evil grin as I said that. He nodded nervously in response, and then I let him go after instructing him to come into my bedroom later tonight, just the way he had been for the past two days. I think I'll be closing his mother's mouth pretty soon after this. Hey guys, thanks so much for all the support. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please feel free to do so. Remember the excitement you felt when you moved to the new house, the new opportunities that would open up, and all the new friends that you would make, and the new places that you get to be in. My family moved to this really old town in Arkansas in 2004. I guess my family was down on money, and this town somehow was the savior for father, as he inherited my aunt's property. All of it, and there was a big house that he inherited too. So when we moved, we moved to that house, and it was more like mansion. Now it wasn't a new house, it was built at least a century ago, but to us, it was our new house. The new house in Arkansas, as I recall this adventure, I was someone who was born in the fast-paced New York, and then the shift brought me to such a drastic halt that it was unbearable for me in the beginning. I was a city boy and I was suddenly in a place that was slower than what I had been used to, so finding a balance was something that was important to me. My school was from a bike distance and I didn't know anyone there, so going there on my own was something I wasn't into. As I got to the place, I saw kids turning their heads and looking at me, and probably judging as to who this new kid was. It was almost as if everyone knew everyone there, and I was someone new and obviously some thought it might be best to try and bully the new kid. Well, I might have been from a city, but I wasn't one of those soft city boys that cannot defend themselves. A tall student probably held back, moved closer, and said, Hey new kid, you got any lunch money? And I said, I have lunch money, but it's not for you. He was big, and certainly it seemed that my comment made him angry. He tried grabbing me, and I held his hand and punched him right in the gut. 
I must have been smaller than him, but there was no way he was going to get an up on me. It was his mistake to underestimate me, but then the whole class had the idea that I wasn't the guy to be messed with. My first impression at that school was that I am not the one to be messed with. It was the first day and I was in detention. They told me to call my parents, but since they were not really back, so I had to stay back in the school. While coming back from the detention, I saw one of the guys had gathered around the backyard where my bike was parked and it was the same guy I beat the crap out of. He was out there with his friends and for what I know, he was probably there for beating me. He and his boys were waiting to just bash me. I saw it from the distance and I was pretty sure that I wasn't going to involve in that. I was tough, but I wasn't going to mess up with so many people. They would mess me up. So I stayed down knowing that it was best for me and it was definitely not wise to mess with four people. I tried circling back and they thought, but they made me when I was trying to sneak and decide to follow. I saw one of them, they had the knife in his hand, and it was really something different. I guess people here were really off the chart. The psychos of the school were after me with the knife in his hand. I bet all he could think was stab me real good. I was making sure that it didn't happen, so I was pedaling as fast as I could. I wasn't going to stop. I decided to keep moving, and I kept moving knowing that these kids would not stop hunting me. I soon was in the front of my new house, and I quickly opened it up and got inside. There was no one in there, and I had to wait, hoping that someone would arrive, but I don't think anyone was arriving. I locked the door and shut myself in, but the bastards knew where I lived now, and there was this feeling that they will not let go. It turns out they didn't. Next morning, when I was getting ready for the school, they stood out of my house on their bikes and they signaled me as they passed by my house. Somehow that day I stayed at home, but I knew I had to get on with it someday. So as I got out of my door knowing what is coming, I set out to go to the market in the evening and I already had a plan in action. I saw that they were all standing right outside my house and I knew it was my time to get beat up. But instead, I invited them in. If there was a way to avoid the beating, it was by my plan. I invited them in and they expected and the guy said, this doesn't mean you are not going to get beat up, we'll just do it inside. I knew what I was doing. I brought them in, knowing what is in store for them. It was they had no idea what they were getting involved in and I made sure that they never would. They entered and the first thing they saw was a hand just lying there with blood coming out of the corner. They were freaked but they were not completely aware of what I had set them up for. And soon, there was another hand and some fingers of a different hand just lying on the floor. The whole house was giving them the creepy vibes. And then a man came out running with a hand on his throat and what looked like blood was oozing out of the veins of his neck and he screamed, help me, help me. And he ran out the door, freaking every single one of those boys. And then I said, what do you guys want to talk about? And as I asked this, I took one of the fingers and started using it as a tool to clear my eye. And I bet they were spooked, since nobody said anything. They just ran, as far and as fast as they could. I kept all of my mother's film prosthetics away, and then along with Ramirez, the guy who acted out the slit throat, cleared the mess. I messed up those guys good. But good thing is, through time, I have formed a friendship with everyone. And when the first day I told them the story of how I fooled them, they were all embarrassed. But most importantly, it helped me be friends. Now I am quite fond of the people of my small, irrelevant town. So I recently moved to Charlotte after the passing of my father in August in Charleston. I had also ended a relationship and just wanted to be on my own and living in a city. I moved to a nice apartment with a fireplace. The apartment felt good when I toured in and moved in. After the first few weeks, I began to have strange feelings. Leaving the shower, getting changed in, and waking for water or pee in the middle of the night gave me the feeling that I had guests in the main room. I remember waking up one night and believing someone was sleeping on my couch. Before I went out there, I made sure to put on a shirt and pants because I didn't want to freak out my guests by being in the buff. As time went on, I found myself more and more self-conscious about what doors I left open, like someone was there and I didn't want to give them a show. This continued and almost has become worse. 
I'll occasionally shower and I can hear the sounds of someone getting ready in the bathroom. It also feels like a female getting ready or in the other room. After that, the dreams came, almost weekly. I've had dreams discussing with this entity that they needed to go. Now I sleep through anything, so what I found weird was after these dreams I would spring awake and feel like someone was in the room with me or the entry to the room. It often reminded me of having to talk with a roommate who is hanging out in your doorway. After a few minutes the feeling would subside like they left and I'd go back to bed. These dreams continued, oftentimes leading to shouting matches where I was demanding it left. About three weeks ago things picked up a bit. Between the dreams and now I have had a few more situations where I felt like someone was with me in the apartment and ended up buying a bathrobe. One night three weeks ago she and I had a discussion in the dream. It was a positive dream but she wouldn't tell me what she wanted. I snapped awake and felt like someone was close, like near the bed close. After a minute of contemplating my options, I spoke out loud that I was leaving. I heard a sigh, in my ear like someone was next to my bed. I was terrified, I threw the bathrobe on and drove around for about an hour. I decided I wouldn't acknowledge her, or it, and just go on with my life. Two days later, I saw her. I was cleaning the house and doing laundry. My laundry room is a closet off the kitchen. I was in the laundry room in my boxer socks and a tea sorting laundry at the time. I got the feeling that someone had just come in the front door. Milliseconds later, I look at the other side of the kitchen and saw a woman standing there. I screamed crazy loud and she was gone. She wasn't in any crazy old clothes from the Victorian era. Actually, she looked like she was wearing a blue and white 80s shirt and some jeans. I'm mad that I panicked because I couldn't see her face before she was gone. I was mad so I started addressing her. First I would tell her I needed to sleep tonight and to leave me alone. A few days later I asked for a sign. Stupid, I know. Well, I have this antique bell thing and after running out for food I came home and found it rolling across my floor in front of me. There is no way it could have left its location without force. Since then, I see her more and more. I've gone back to ignoring, but it doesn't help. She hasn't done anything malicious or destructive, just is here. I'm kind of stumped on how to handle this and just weirded out. Update, March 12th, 2019. So I did some exploring in this area. Without giving too much away, my complex is long and winding. I've never been to the other side because I don't need to go that way as I'm close to the main road. Well, on the other side of the complex, within a tenth of a mile is a massive high-tension wires, the huge power lines, and a substation below it. On that station is a cell tower. I know nothing about the paranormal besides what I've researched and seen on TV, but could there be some electromagnetism fields or something from there? Not sure, but it was a thought. Also, there is a small brook in the area. On that other side of the complex is a standalone ER. From that area with the power stuff, I can see almost directly into the ambulance bay of an ER. Not sure what it means, but it was an interesting location. There have been no major traumas in the area that I could find, but I spoke to maintenance about the unit and it seems all the tenants leave after a year. Now, we have a decent transient population moving here for work and school, so maybe just a lot of energy left in the place. They said no major complaints or sudden move-outs. I bought Sage on Amazon, and that is coming, so I'll let everyone know about that, and I'm looking for a psychic or medium for a session, but have no idea how to vet someone for this. Any tips would be welcome. The apartment feels quiet today. I've been keeping music on low and some lights on during the darker hours before bed, mainly the hallway light. Also, I only have one window and a huge slider, but I've kept the shades open on both to let some light in. Not sure what it does, but it makes me feel good. Finally, I'd like to say thank you for everyone that's responded. I've, I've never gone through something like this or anything even remotely close to it, so 
Thank you for the helpful comments and the occasional joke to lighten the mood. This has been an unnerving ordeal so far and being pointed in the right path is calming.